It will be months before a final decision, but seismic testimony taking place in Washington, D.C. I read your briefs, your brief to say that the only real options we have are to reaffirm Roe and Casey as they stand or to overrule them in their entirety. We're examining arguments before the Supreme Court concerning abortion and whether Roe versus Wade will be thrown out. We're also welcoming a local TV icon. Ken Amaro joins us on This Week in Jacksonville. So glad you're with us today. So the future of abortion rights has been at stake this week. The Supreme Court considering a case that could overturn Roe v. Wade. Wednesday, justices heard arguments about a Mississippi law that bans termination of pregnancies after 15 weeks. Mississippi wants the court to allow each state to set its own policy. A decision upholding the state's 15-week abortion ban would reverse nearly 50 years of Supreme Court precedent. It would also open the door to state restrictions much earlier in pregnancy. So joining me now here in studio, political analyst Rick Mullaney, founder and director of Jacksonville University's Public Policy Institute. Rick, broadly speaking, why was this case, this week's case, so important? Make no mistake, Kent, this is the biggest abortion case in decades, and the reason is simple. It tees up the possibility that after nearly 50 years, Roe versus Wade and the, the controlling case, Planned Parenthood versus Casey, that, that those cases could be overturned or they could be substantially modified. And that is really, really significant. If that were to happen, the significant consequences legally, politically, socially, a little bit of context is helpful. The basic legal question is, does a woman have a constitutional right to an abortion? In 1973, the U.S. Supreme Court answered that yes in Roe versus Wade, and it set up a trimester sort of analysis in which the first trimester, the, the right was absolute, in the second trimester, it could be regulated, and in the third, abortions could be abandoned. However, 19 years later, in Planned Parenthood versus Casey, the U.S. Supreme Court took it back up again, and although they upheld the central holding that a woman had a right to an abortion, they changed it substantially. They threw out the trimester analysis. They were embraced the viability test, meaning that after viability, abortions could be banned, and they abandoned the strict liability test and instead went to an undue burden test. The Mississippi law, which bans abortions after 15 weeks, is clearly in conflict with Roe and Casey, and if it's to be upheld, Roe and Casey either need to be modified or overturned. So um, more than, well, four years ago, for sure, we talked about the consequences of having a Republican uh, elected to the White House and what that would mean over those four years of electing or nominating and then affirming justices of the Supreme Court. So now there's a conservative majority. There's six justices who would be considered conservative justices on the Supreme Court. What are the political consequences here? It's not supposed to be political at all when it gets to the Supreme Court, but are there political consequences when it comes to what may happen here in the justices ruling on this case? Well, Kent, the decision is due actually next June, which is just before the midterms. And the political consequences, I think, will depend greatly on what the court decides. Many believe that it's going, the court may very well overturn Roe and Casey. There's also, however, not a strong possibility, and Justice Roberts in oral arguments this past week was really focused on this, simply upholding the 15-week ban in Mississippi and modifying the holding in Roe and Casey. If that happens, I don't think the political consequences will be as significant. However, if Roe versus Wade and Casey are overturned, the political consequences could be significant. The Democrats in particular will try to use that to galvanize their base. They will try to refocus the issue away from inflation that the Republicans Republicans are talking about away from crime and other issues to abortion rights and to Roe versus Wade. And so the political consequences for the midterm in state election races, the House and the Senate, in the congressional races, and of course in the governor's race, it can be pretty significant as far as the Democrats are concerned. So uh, I know we, we can't show you video from inside the Supreme Court, but allow me to share some of the audio from both sides of the argument. Take a listen here. Your first question, and the only one on which we granted review, was uh, whether all pre-viability prohibitions on elective abortions are unconstitutional. And then I think it's fair to say that when you got to the brief on the merits, you kind of shifted gears um, uh, and talked a lot more about whether or not Roe and Casey should be uh, overruled. The harder questions are, you know, should the court overrule and, and take the, that momentous step. And that's why we devote a lot of space to that very important issue. The right of a woman to choose, the right of, to control her own body, has been clearly set for uh, since Casey and never challenged. 
you want us to reject that line of viability and adopt something different. Will this institution survive the stench that this creates in the public perception that the Constitution and its reading are just political acts? So both sides of the, the arguments there. What do you think? Pretty strong words there at the, that final comment. We there, just were, well, there were two sets of quotes. The first quotes, or the first clips that we listened to, highlight the challenge here of what do you do with this 15-week ban? There is a school of thought that says you can uphold the ban and take a more incremental approach. Affirm the central holding of Roe and Casey that a woman has a right to an abortion, but change the test from viability to another test, which, by the way, is challenging. How do you get to a workability test? That's why Judge Gorsuch, for example, says maybe we're better throwing it out. And that is what that discussion was about. Can you have a compromise or must you throw it out? The second quote from Justice Sotomayor is a very strong statement. And in fact, has been criticized some as sort of a shot at her partners, suggesting a lack of integrity on their part and that their views aren't based on constitutional institutional issues and their reading as a judge, but instead on political considerations. But her comments reflect how divided the court is. And I'm not saying ideologically, and I'm not even saying in a partisan sense. Judges on the U.S. Supreme Court take a very different approach to a, uh, uh, interpreting the U.S. Constitution. Many of them are originalists or textualists that look firmly to the text itself and its meaning at the time. Others, like Justice Sotomayor and Breyer and Kagan, take a different approach, sort of a living Constitution approach. They look at the text, but they also look at the times, and that is a broader approach. So those judicial interpretations clash here, and on this court, there is a divide in how they interpret the 14th Amendment due process clause of the U.S. Constitution. We're hearing uh, late spring, maybe even June, when we will hear from the court on this. Uh, already, though, uh, politicians are kind of getting into this. Charlie Chris, the former governor, he's running for governor again. He tweeted about this topic this week. He said, Roe v. Way is on the ballot next year. And I promise you this, as governor, I'll veto any anti-choice bill the Florida legislature sends to my desk. Is this foreshadowing? Is this we're going to see whether it's a governor's race or those congressional races? Are we going to see this be a topic for candidates who are saying, this is why you should vote for me? Kent, I think so. I think on the Democratic side, there is going to be an effort, and you're always seeing with Charlie Crist, you'll see it with other Democrats, to take this case and the ruling potentially that we could expect next June and to use it to shift the issue and to begin to talk about Roe versus Wade and abortion rights. And as in any political campaign, who gets to, find, to define the issue gets to win the argument. But I do think it's a way to rally the base of the Democratic Party. It's a way to help on turnout. And it's also a way to try to appeal to more independent voters and women in particular about women's rights and about Roe versus Wade. On the Republican side, however, I think you're going to continue to see a focus on what they call the big, big three, inflation, crime, immigration. So the midterms next year should be very, very significant, of course, and this ruling, this decision by the U.S. Supreme Court could play a role in those debates. Well, it, it is a debate that people get very passionate about, either side of the topic. Uh, it's something that certainly is of interest, of conversation, and, and people say this is why, this is how it should be. Kent, there's just no question that it's passionate. And you can try to separate the legal arguments, which we heard last week, from the policy preferences which people have, but passions run high on both sides of the policy preferences. And as you saw last week, the differences ran very high with the U.S. Supreme Court, with the justices in very different places on this. This issue, by the way, is whatever the court decides, the issue is not going away. It is a challenging issue legally. It is a challenging issue from a policy standpoint. It's challenging for the public. And you continue, yeah. you are going to continue to see it be a very challenging issue ahead. Yeah. We'll talk about this again. Rick Mullaney, thanks for your time today. Thank you, Ken. All right, so stay with us. He's never worked at this station, but he is a TV icon in our area. Ken Amaro is joining us next on This Week in Jacksonville. If you've been injured by medical malpractice, call Farah and Farah for a free review of your case, even if another firm has turned your case down. Farah and Farah. Veterans, you may have earned a variety of VA benefits. Did you know VA can help you further your education and pursue professional training? The Home Loan Guarantee Program can help you buy, repair, or adapt a home. VA provides housing support if you find yourself homeless or at risk of homelessness. And don't forget world-class health care. Learn more about these and other VA benefits. Visit choose.va.gov. Two 
reindeer. 27, 28, 29. We've been waiting all year to come together. Yes, Have a happy and safe holiday season from Lexus. Hi, honey. Hi, oh, I missed you. You just want a video call the kids. Okay. Hush, little baby. Don't say a word. But if slow upload speeds turn your good you night call into an accidental me? horror movie. Can you hear me? Shut it down. Just remember, oh you're not a bad goodness. mom. Yes. You just need better internet. AT&T Fiber delivers faster upload speeds for more reliable video calls. Get AT&T Fiber, plans starting at $35 a month for a year. Limited availability in select areas. Call 1-877-ONLY-ATT. When cleaning your air ducts, it's important to clean the entire system. And air duct cleaning from Stanley Steamer removes pounds of trapped dirt, dust, and allergens from your home completely. The cleaning improves your home's indoor air quality, keeps your home cleaner longer, and can even improve the efficiency of your HVAC system. We want you to have the cleanest and healthiest indoor air possible. So call for a free inspection today. Stanley Steamer gets your home cleaner. News for Jack's Insider. Sign up and sign in today. My clients are everyday people. My opponents are universally insurance companies or large companies. You have us on your side and they're going to have their lawyers. And this is one situation where it's a fair fight. In times of tragedy and crisis, look to the first responders. In times of turmoil and confusion, look to us, your first informers. Every important local story on Channel 4. How much you should expect to pay out of pocket for a test. Every critical newsletter, free for News 4 Jacks insiders with a vital network of local experts. Get their flu vaccines and get their COVID vaccine if they're eligible. Checking every fact with our trust index. Children wearing masks in classrooms. News 4 Jacks on Channel 4, the local station. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. So the motto may be familiar for our next guest. Don't get mad, just say I'm telling Ken. The one and only Ken Amaro is with us today, longtime local journalist, an icon of TV in the greater Jacksonville area. And Ken, uh, the reason we get to do this is because congratulations, you said, okay, <laughs> I'm retiring more than 40 years yeah. uh, on air with First Coast News. So congratulations. And uh, tell me how this has been. I know it's just this week there yeah. was a celebration for well, you. Well, Ken, first off, thank you for having me. I, it's very gracious of you. Um, and, and just for sharing, it's been 42 years. And uh, about three or four years ago, I started thinking about it. And it's, it's not that I don't like to work anymore. It's just it's that phase or that space and time in life where you're like, eh, maybe it's time for a break. So I, I decided to uh, to hang up my cleats, as the cliche goes. Yeah, well, you had been doing a very specific role, a memorable role uh, at your station for a long time. So let's talk about that, that signature of yours over the year, consumer advocate, uh, the on your side reporter. How did that come up? It was about 10 years since you had started at the station that you took on that role. Right? Yeah, I, I started in 79, 89, the guy that was doing the On Your Side segments, he got a job in L.A. and he left. And I had just won an Emmy for some reporting I was doing. And the uh, news director comes over and says, hey, I'd like you to be my On Your Side guy. And I tell the story like this because really this is how it happened. And I said, well, how much is that going to be? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and when he said, how much? I said, I'm your guy. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just that simple. But uh, over the years, it's evolved to where... Uh, you understand, you grow sensitivity, and, and, and you become passionate about uh, what you're doing. And, and so that's the evolution for me. You know? yeah. I, prior to coming here to Channel 4 11 years ago, I had a, a stretch in another market where I was the on-your-side reporter. Okay. There's something really compelling about being that consumer advocate, isn't there? There is. And what I've learned in, in the years of doing this is that people are looking for someone that will listen to what they have to say, uh, someone who will be their voice. And so we often say voice for the voiceless, and that may seem kind of cliche -ish, but it's the reality that you've got individuals who they've reached out to A, B, C, and D, yeah. and they're not getting your attention. So when they reach out to you and you stop and you listen, then all of a sudden things are, are going. And even if you can't resolve whatever the issues might be, at least you paid 
attention to what the concern was. There, there's a measure of respect given yes, to that person just because, I, I, hey, I'm listening to you. These other, these other people are saying, no, we don't have time for you, we can't help you. But in that consumer advocate role, you're saying, I'm going to listen. Yeah. And, and the thing is, uh, during my tenure, it evolved to where I would get a call from someone that said, oh, Ken, um, my lawyer told me to call you. <laughs> wow, that's a compliment, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I consider it such, but uh, because, you know, it, it, the, the, I they guess weren't the, anywhere. The, they weren't getting anywhere. And the, the cost of the legal expense was, uh, uh, would would be prohibitive, so it's like, call Ken, see if he can help. Tell me one of your most memorable stories. I know that there's always <laughs> something you're like, I can't choose, but this one, it meant a lot to you individually, I guess. You know, as a journalist, you know that, that sometimes it's hard to, uh, to select most memorable, right. you know, I, I always say the last one. But um, uh, while I was cleaning out my desk, uh, one of the stories that really moved me of recently uh, and I say recently, it's been about four years, was the uh, story of the cancer cluster up in Waycross, Georgia, where um, I, I was in a room with about 13, 14 parents who had lost children to uh, different forms of cancer. And the community was concerned because within a 30-day uh, period, at least four kids were diagnosed with rhabdomyosarcoma and Ewing sarcoma, which are very rare cancers, uh, 350 a year in the U.S., yet in this Waycross community, you had three or four cases within a 30-day yeah. period. And so they were concerned about environmental impact, uh, that it was the source was environmental, that there might have been a, a, um, a cancer cluster. It's never been declared such. But no one was listening, so they reached out. We got involved, um, brought it to the attention. Uh, the Georgia Department of Public Health came back in, did its own assessment. Unfortunately, it was done kind of away from the media, so we don't know what the extent was. And they concluded inconclusive. Um, but what we gave them was a listening ear, and we brought some attention to a, a community concern that yeah. Maybe there's something going on here. Yeah, and, and especially, like you say, so for some parents, there's yeah. some people who are going, oh, yeah. I'm so worried about this, concerned about this. Kent, right? that was one of the most emotionally draining experience wow. because you're sitting in a room with all these family members. They're holding pictures of loved ones, infants, uh, young children who have died with uh, some of the uh, cancers that were being described. I, I'll be honest, I'd never heard the names before until that moment. And, and it was so, it ha happened so often with them that they could, they could describe the cancer without stumbling. Uh, it was right on their lips. They had become acquainted with it, the unusualness of it, things of that nature. And, and it impacted them tremendously. And, um, and, and I was privileged to be able to uh, be invited with them and tell their story. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you telling some stories here. We've asked Ken to stay with us for a few more minutes. So before we do that, a couple wishes from our colleagues to him from Channel 4. Ken Amaro, it is my honor and privilege to be the first on Anchor Row to say congratulations to you on your retirement. Larry and I wish you and Roz all the very best, and I hope this is just the beginning of some fun years ahead. And it has been a privilege, my personal privilege, to have worked with you, my friend. Congratulations. Have fun. Ken Amaro, you are a remarkable man, a remarkable um, person in this community. And thank you for all that you've done. It's been a pleasure working with you. And from me and my wife, Melanie, we wish you the best. And we know that the best is yet to come. Continued blessings in your next endeavors. It's the huge holiday sale at the Christmas store in Splash. 20 to 75% off pre-lit trees, lights and ornaments, wreaths and garland. Everything you need to get ready for Christmas, now 20 to 75% off at the Christmas store at Splash. Life comes at you fast, and in the blink of an eye, everything can change. For nearly 30 years, we've been helping our clients get their lives back on track after an unexpected, sometimes tragic event. We drive the same roads as you do, and just like you, we try to drive defensively and avoid accidents. 
But sometimes, even though we do our best to be safe, something comes along that wrecks our day and impacts our life. If you're a victim and you need our help, call Harold and Harold. Well, hello, Win Dixie. You hear that, bro? No, what is it? It's the most rewarding time of the year. Drop that jingle! Deck our carts with lots of winning. La, 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 la. When Dixie meets have got us grinning. Fa la 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 la. All the freshest picks before us. Fa la 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 la. Earn rewards and join the chorus. Fa la 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 la. Thanks to you for points and savings. Fa la 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 la. Whoa, we forgot the rules. I'll get them. I got both kinds. Perfect feast for all our cravings. Fa la 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 la. Fa la 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 la. Win Dixie. It's a win win. No matter what year it is or what season it is, Subaru of Jacksonville has made giving back to the community a priority. So, of course, when the Subaru Share the Love event comes around, we find a way to go bigger. During the event, Subaru donates to charities with every new car purchase. But we want to make a bigger local impact. Subaru of Jacksonville is matching that donation to equal $500, plus another $5 for every Subaru vehicle routine service visit. Make a difference with us. Visit Subaru of Jacksonville today to give back. Drive a Subaru. You'll buy a Subaru. News for Jax celebrates all the great people who make a positively Jax difference. When the heroes at JFRD answer the call in town or wherever they happen to be, this community supports them. And when News for Jax asked you to help with a big Paz Jax welcome home, this happened. Without them, I don't know where we would be. Join the Paz Jax movement. Sign up, sign in for the News for Jax Insider today. Morgan & Morgan is not only America's largest injury law firm, we're also a local law firm with branch offices right here in your community. We're here for you, wherever you are, whatever you need. There's only one Morgan & Morgan for the people. Looking for a hot tub? Look no further than Splash. All hot tubs on sale as low as $89 a month. Truckloads of hot tubs arriving monthly, so come reserve yours today. With zero interest financing, get your backyard vacation ready at Splash. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. Ken Amaro, you are so empathetic to your viewers. Our community and our community loves you. And I have so enjoyed watching you <laughs> from across the river all these years. And I just totally respect what you do. And I know you're going to just keep doing what you do and sharing your heart with others and that fabulous bow tie. Good luck. Ken. Happy retirement. Boy, have you earned it. I think of all the people that you have helped, all those viewers that you have helped over the years, 42. But just remember, Ken, I still have four years on you. Best of everything going forward. All right, so you just heard four of uh, our <laughs> colleagues here at Channel 4 uh, with greetings to you. Uh, you've heard some of this this week. Great article about you in the newspaper here in town as well. How does this feel uh, on the, the front end of saying I'm retired? You know, at first, it, it, <laughs> it, it's, it was a little overwhelming. And, uh, but, but I'm humbled. I'm humbled. I'm, I'm grateful for Tom and Deb and Tarek and, and Joy for sharing uh, their thoughts, their kind words. Uh, I'm grateful for the response that the community has given me because I honestly didn't expect that, you know. So it, it is humbling, and and it shows to me that I, I am part of the community, and this this is home. It's been home for forty some plus years, yeah. and so so having it be home for forty some plus years. Yeah. 
What do you think about where we're at in Jacksonville? How do you feel uh, for the future here in Northeast Florida? Well, I've seen the transformation. Uh, I've seen what this city was when I first started and wh what it is now. It's more, uh, more diverse. Uh, there's a lot of energy taking place. The uh, suburban areas have grown. Uh, the attention clearly has to be, and there's been a lot of conversation over the last decade or so about downtown and 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 if we can get development and and the growth downtown i think we can con connect the suburbs to make this city an even better place i mean it's it's, it's a great place to live yeah uh I, I, before we go away uh your colleagues at uh, first coast news uh, had a celebration with you <laughs> something like this it's, uh you're the champ they're putting the the boxing room on there. over the top there <laughs> and what i loved was the cake that's coming in here in a moment huge and uh in the shape of a bow tie yeah a uh, bakery in the in the mandarin area lady uh, made that I, I think it's cake of paradise is the name of the business and How'd it it, taste? It, 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 it tasted well. <laughs> okay. It tasted good, really. All right. Uh, I asked her, so how long did it take? And it took like <laughs> six, seven hours or something like that, you know. So this was not like wedding cake where, oh, I'm just going to put that in the <laughs> fridge or the freezer no. for a while. And see no, it was legit. A year from now. <laughs> hey, uh, you are uh, a legit, wonderful person. And I appreciate it. I know that I, I've told people over the years that uh, there have been those occasions in town. Hey, you're Ken Amaro. No, that's an otter, but no, that is Ken Amaro. And uh, I, I just love that we got a chance to talk well, about you. all you've done in our community over the years. It's a, a, a privilege that we have on air to connect with people yes, and do something that helps them. You've clearly been all about that for a long time. Well, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Ken Amaro, thank you. All right, well, thank you for being with us this morning. This week in Jacksonville, we air each Sunday morning at this time. I'm Kent Justice. Thanks for watching on air on Channel 4. You can also see us on the CW17 on Sundays at noon, and you'll find other episodes online at news4jax.com. Today, more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida, and South Georgia's number one source for local news.